welcome to Ariel's Bookshelf. I'm Ariel Rossi. And um, today I'm going to be doing Diary of the Wimpy Kid, The Third Wheel. And this one is the seventh book. And this one's kind of my favorite. But I think it's because of the book. Or maybe because it's the seventh one. I think seven is a lucky number. I mean, I'm seven years old. And love is in the air. But Greg is wondering, what does that mean for him? So there's this Valentine's Middle School that middle school dance that is turning his world upside down. Greg scrambles like to find a date and he's very, very worried that he's gonna be left out cold on the big night. But a lesson I would say in this book is you never know who's gonna be lucky in love. And so this is a really funny picture. I think you messed it all up by doing that. I thought that was gonna be in there, but that doesn't happen. That's actually kinda cool though. So this really funny part is when his brother Roderick gives him time out and all this other funny part is, it says here, Greg, I even had to use my $5 bill I kept inside my sock just in case. He kept a dollar bill in his sock. I have another joke. What kind of music does an astronaut like? Neptunes. Get it? Neptunes. So, um... Anyway, um, that's it for this book. Dad Wimpy Kid, The Wrecking Ball, and this is number 14. So, if you're wondering why they named it Wrecking Ball, that's because in this in this book, there's a giant wrecking ball that accidentally destroys a house. Sorry, I'm sorry. But there's a bunch of other things that happen, and that's only in the ending. So I didn't ruin the whole thing for you. Anyway. So then, an no. unexpected inheritance gives Greg's family a big chance to give their house big changes. But they soon find that home improvement is not going to work out for the Heavies. The Heavies are the most unlucky family in the world. The universe, let me correct. Let, wait, let me rephrase that. The most unlucky family in the universe. Not just our galaxy, the universe. Not just the world, not just the city, not just in this house, the universe. So, I mean, <clears throat> once the walls come all the way down, well, that makes sense because the wrecking ball makes the walls come down to the floor, like this. Yeah. Then, all sorts of problems come up. Friend will, talk small, unwelcome critters, and something even more sinister makes sense. Oh, all make Greg and his family wonder if the reservations are worth the trouble. When the dust finally clears, I mean, here's a question that I'm asking you. When the dust clears, will they be able to stay or will they have to get out of town? I don't know. And this stuff, the funny part in this one, I mean, this really cool part and weird part. It says, I'm pretty sure all those lawn chemicals can mess with your teeth. So if I end up with the third eye or something, I'm going to blame my parents. And this one's really creepy. See? You see that? Well, he has a third eye. And it looks like there's eyebrows together. But instead of his eyebrows together, that's his third eye here, winking. So it says that my new plan is to build a really small house. Man. Look at that, that's teeny. So that it doesn't attract a lot of attention and then build all the good stuff will be underground. That's a good thing. Something I learned from this book is you never know when a wrecking ball is gonna hit your house. So if your backpack or your desk or your house looks like a total wreck, it's probably after a wrecking ball hit it. Get it, wreck, wrecking ball? <laughs> Tired of them begin the deep end. You know, speaking of the deep end, I've always been totally terrified at the deep end of our pool. Anyway, so um, this book is the 15th book. And so when Greg Huffy goes to and his family, they hit the road for 
and they go like across the country for a canter, camping trip, and they're ready for the adventure of a lifetime. But then their plans kind of hit like a major snag, not a teeny snag, a giant snag, and they find themselves stranded at an RV park that's not really a summertime paradise. Nah, -uh. no way. Things only get worse when the skies open up and the water starts to rise. And they wonder if they can save their vacation or if it's already too deep. And a funny part in this book is, it says, I did not feel safe going in the pool, so I decided to relax in the hot tub. Instead, that's when I found out the place wasn't joking about pet friendly. You got to look at this picture. See? Those dogs are relaxing there. What? And this really, really crazy part. Oh my gosh, you gotta look at this thing. It says, I'm lo really looking forward to telling Voli about my vacation when I get back. But I'll probably leave out the parts where it's so great. And I might change a few other details here because you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> so, to change the ending. His dad, mom, and bro older brother on top of the roof. Manny is fishing with a skunk. Greg is the one cracking a whip because they got a bunch of sharks that are in their, that are their horses basically. And there's a bear inside. Well, everything here actually happens. Like so, the, there's a scene with the skunk, there's a scene with the bear, and his family and him are in the main scene. So, but the, Whip and the shark is the only part that's not true. Anyway, so, I mean, this book, I like this book, but it's also kind of creepy, but not creepy enough for me to throw it at the deep end of the pool. Get it? Deep end of the pool, and deep end is the name of this book. Life lesson that I've learned from this book would be the pool can never be too deep for you. Diary of the Kid, The Getaway. It's basically about when Greg Helfi and his family decides to go to Isla de Corrales. Greg gets outvoted because he's never been into an airplane. And he's like, I'm not crazy about the idea of locking myself in a metal tube. That's what he calls the airplane. I'm, I don't think that's... The airplane basically is like a metal tube. This creepy part is when th they were going on this, this place where turtles hatch and they were watching for them. But then Greg stepped on a seashell and then it crunched under his foot and he thought he crunched an egg. That is super creepy. Imagine if you actually crunched a egg, which a baby cedar was gonna come out. And then this other, this really funny part was when it says that the little brother named Manny, he pocketed one of the turtles and when they went back to their hotel, the turtle was already swimming with many in the bathtub. Creepy. The Isla de Corrales is basically split into two parts, the mild side and the wild side. The mild side is where you go like family, like kids and grown-ups. But what, in the wild side, it's mostly where all the romance goes in. So then, um, He's in the mild side because obviously he has a little brother, a little sister, and he has his parents, so he can't go to the wild side. But you know what I really like about these covers is that when you feel them, there's usually something to feel in the cover. It's so cool. This feels really bumpy. Like the real cover of a real jungle. But like, I would say that this is mostly about when he goes to the island and it's like, and then he, there's this box of jellyfish that comes in. And like, that's like the most deadliest thing. And it's the smallest thing. It's so, here's the two things. The box of jellyfish, the most deadliest thing in the planet. And it's the teeniest fish in the whole entire ocean sea. And he's scared of it. Yeah, well, pretty obviously, if you get stung by it, your heart stops. What I learned from this book is when, hef, when the healthies get in trouble, they just run. So then, like, if you come up with the police officer and he's accusing you of something, you turn the other way and you get away. I think that rhymes. Anyway, that's it for this book. Bye!